good afternoon uh, from wherever you are. I am Jerry Murphy and welcome to my first Zero Ecosystem Expert webinar. This webinar is running through all of the updates on the systems that I specialize in uh, that happened throughout September, September 2013. The, uh, the focus today is going to be on Zero Unleashed and Vent. I actually haven't gone through uh, any of the details of the GeoUp updates. They were actually quite a while ago in July. Uh, there's lots of little ones there and if you have joined this session particularly just to hear about GeoUp then please let me know. Ask me any questions about GeoUp that you have and I'll answer them as best as I can uh, and then I am happy to organise another session just particularly on GeoUp if you, if you need the further details on those. We are just going to focus on the other systems which is going to definitely take uh, an hour of, of our time just getting through what the other three systems did just in September. So that's pretty exciting. Okay, so how this webinar works. We're going to uh, review and demonstrate all of the updates that were outlined in the newsletter for those three systems. Uh, going through each of the, the updates and as you know, if you had a chance to read the newsletter that I focus on how to sell it, use it, and, and train each of those features. You can uh, put any questions into the chat box throughout the session, and I will just be getting through all of the updates and all of the uh, demonstrations that I have to show you, and then we'll go through the questions afterwards. You're also welcome to pick my brain about any Q&A questions you might have about the four systems that I specialize in. After the, uh, after the session in the Q&A time. Uh, I have muted the mics for this point in time so that I can just concentrate on getting what we need, but then happy to open it up in Q&A session, uh, in Q the Q&A time at the end. We plan to be here for, uh, try and get through the content in about 50 minutes and have the questions at the end as well, uh, covering about 10 or 15 minutes, but I do have some time afterwards if you have further questions. So what you're going to learn in this session, as I mentioned, is how to sell each of the features, use them and train them. Uh, I know that you want to become an ecosystem expert so that you can make money helping people. To make money, you need to be able to sell your expertise. And to become an expert, you need to know how to use the system and teach others how to use it. So for each new feature, we're going to learn how to sell it, use it and train it. Okay, so the first feature we have is the release of the inbuilt calculator in Zero. Now, when I first wrote the article uh, the, uh, that we put in the newsletter, the inbuilt calculator was only on manual journals. You could only use it on the debit and credit field in manual journals. And then on the 1st of October, just after I released the newsletter, Zero updated yet again. Uh, it's always very fast, obviously, as we know, it's why we're here <laughs> using me to help you stay up to date. And Zero released the ability to do use the inbuilt calculator in every uh, in every amount field, or well, not even just the amount field, but quantity fields as well, discount fields. So what that means is is that you can enter a basic arithmetic operation into a field in Zero, and it will calculate it for you. For example, you enter five plus five and hit enter equals ten. Twenty minus seven, etc. Why do we want to know about this, and why do our clients want to know about this? is that it saves times and time and can reduce errors. The algorithm rhythms that are available uh, is to add, subtract, multiply, divide and group. They're all the pretty standard functions, the same sort of key and, and characters that you use when you're uh, doing it in Excel, so in an Excel spreadsheet. So let me show you how that works. If we add a sales invoice, so in the quantity we'll put 5 plus 5 and hit enter, that gives us 10. In the unit price we do 20 minus 7, that gives us 13 and in the discount field we can do 5 divided by 2, that will give us 2.5. We can then enter the rest of the details and approve that invoice. 
So that obviously, you're not going to be always using it in that particular example, but it shows how you can uh, obviously enter in those details in with the inbuilt calculator quickly and easily into, the, into those sections. Okay, so your training task to be able to learn how to use the inbuilt calculator and teach others how to do it is just to familiarize yourself with the use of the inbuilt calculator and the algorithm, algorithms available. The next one, the next one is the zero history and notes activity report. So the history and notes activity report gives you the ability to keep a detailed audit trail of user activity and it's only available to advisors. The purpose of it and the benefit of it is that, it can, that you can quickly identify edits and errors. Just like the, uh, the MYB audit trail, if you've, if you've used that before, um, what I like to use it most for is being able to see the uh, details of what's actually been, uh, what the users have been doing. So let's go to the advisor tab and under the advisor tab, you can see the history and notes activity. Once you open this report, you can then see the history and the date, time, and details of what every user has, has, has done throughout, uh, throughout the program and when they've done it. You can then filter that report uh, by period, showing certain items, and you can just so show certain users as well. Obviously, there's still the function at the bottom of every single invoice screen and every bill screen that you can see what it is uh, that has happened to that particular transaction when it was created, edited, approved, timings, etc. But this uh, histories and activity report gives you the ability to uh, see when people have done certain things and, and keep track of what's happened in the file. So your training tasks in relation to that update with the history and notes activity report is just to confirm the user, uh, to confirm that you know how to uh, use the user access level uh, features of Xero and also update the user access level because it may be that the advisors, uh, you may need to update the user level to advisor. Uh, obviously you, there's a lot of other things that an advisor can do that you may or may not want certain users to be advisors, but you do have to have advisor level to be able to access that report and then have a bit of a practice with running and filtering the history and notes activity report. So the next update that Xero did throughout uh, September was the tax file number declarations. Uh, now, I don't know about you, but when I, without doing too much research into the tax file number declarations previously, I actually thought that you had to have Workflow Max. I figured that you had to be uh, in relation to the BASs and all those other practice manager uh, things I thought you had to have workflow, workflow Max to do the tax file number declarations. That was just an assumption, which I assumed wrong, which is great because here I am to show you how easy it is to actually do it and it's all just within zero. So what the function is, is that you can lodge TFN declarations direct to the ATO. In order to be able to do it, you have to have valid uh, organization settings and before starting to use that feature, you need to go into the organization settings of the Xero file and confirm that they are correct because that's the ATO's way to talk to you uh, and confirm any details for you if they have any questions. You uh, need to include all the employee details, or all the standard employee details that is on a, a tax file number declaration form. And at this stage, you do still have to have a paper copy of the tax file number declaration form signed and dated and filed. So I'll show you how you can do it within Xero itself, but you do still need to have the paper copy. This doesn't negate you needing to do, to do that. So if we go into payroll and into employees, when your clients have new employees in their business, you're obviously going to come in and add the employee and enter all of their details. This is my demo file. So here I can see the personal details of this employee, all of the details that are on the tax file number declaration need to be entered, address, date of birth, full name, gender, all that type of thing. And then if we go to the tax declaration tab, 
That's where you can uh, obviously update all of the tax declaration details, enter in a valid tax file number, which you must have, the employment basis and all of the tick boxes as if they were filling out the form. So really it should be a standard habit for you to train your clients to say, uh, get the tax file number declaration, the paper copy, so that they don't think that this is what they have to do. They still need to get the paper copy then, but they don't have to mail it off to the tax office. They can uh, keep that copy and then fill in the details here. So you can see on this on this one, uh, this is the demo file, and the and because it is the demo file, this file now button is not activated. But as long as you have your organisation settings confirmed and all of the details in the system for that employee, you have this file now button goes green, and you can enter those details and hit file now. Once you've done that, it then confirms, asks for a confirmation, basically like an uh, electronic signature that says, please confirm these details are correct because they're about to be sent to the ATO. And then there is a bunch of statuses. Once the, uh, it's, it will say filed, and then it will say it's either accepted or rejected uh, once the ATO has received it. So that information is all sitting within zero and it talks to the ATO in that way. If you do have any other questions or it's wild before you actually get to use it, there is a, a help video at the top and any other information, obviously plenty, help in the, plenty of help in the help.zero.com as well. So that's how easy it is to now file tax file number declarations through Xero directly and it doesn't involve anything to do with anything else. <laughs> okay, so your training tasks for understanding and getting confident in learning how to do that is getting yourself an employee, <laughs> no, getting into Xero, adding an employee, uh, seeing that they, the file now button and then reviewing the status uh, once it's filed and just making the making a habit that obviously checking if there's a rejection on the, on the particular tax file number and the reason why so that everything is compliant with the tax office. Okay, so the e-way payment service. That was another big one that we need to be able to uh, understand and use uh, for our clients if they want to be able to uh, produce online invoices that enables an immediate payment option through e-way. So eWay, if you don't know, is a payment gateway. Basically, it gives the ability for your customers to pay by credit card by clicking a link and then entering the credit card details in. Very similar to, to PayPal, but it's a, a, an Australian-based uh, yeah, online merchant facility. So eWay payment service enables the immediate, uh, immediate online invoice payments. You can, uh, sorry, not you, when the payment is made, by the, the customer. Just for those of you that, that may not have seen it before, if you haven't had payment services or PayPal enabled, when you uh, produce an invoice and send it to a customer, it now gets sent as an, an online invoice. So when it gets sent into the, um, to the customer, they can either get a copy of the PDF or they can have the online invoice uh, link in the email. They can then open the invoice and it has a pay now button uh, if there is a payment service available within that online invoice screen. And then also if it, they do produce a uh, get open the PDF, it has a pay online now link on the actual PDF, which is a hyperlink that links back to the payment service as well. All of those things are enabled actually within the invoice branding uh, settings. Uh, I'll show you how to set up the eWay payment service in the uh, in the invoice branding, but actually uh, the the little credit card pay now links is just what you set on the individual invoice brands. So when the payment is made and the customer gets the invoice, makes the payment through eWay, eWay can then also mark off the payment, uh, the invoice payment in zero for you. So mark it as paid, so it obviously keeps your account suitable up to date. There is a special offer for eWay, uh, for clients signing up to eWay if they're existing zero customers. And if you want to, if you are a Zero partner already, you can also become an eWay partner for free, which means that you have access to um, some free eWay training. The special offer for existing customers, uh, Zero customers, to join eWay and set up that payment service is actually quite significant 
the uh, the setup fee years ago it used to be four hundred dollars, but found out recently that it's up to six hundred dollars. Usually, there's a setup fee, an establishment fee of six hundred dollars, and then uh, an ongoing fee of a hundred dollars. So uh, those there's approximately seven hundred dollars worth of savings in setting up an eWay account if a customer is already a zero customer and they tell eWay that. So looking at the actual where to set up the eWay payment service and how to do that in zero. If you go to settings and then general settings, and into the invoice settings, there is then this payment service button, services button up the top in the middle. So it shows you your active payment services that you currently have, and then you can add a payment service down the bottom. You can select eWay, there is some other op options there obviously, and then it opens the add eWay uh, box that then enables you to enter all your eWay account settings. Uh, these are the little logos that appear on your invoice so that you've got, people know that they have the ability to accept all those payments. By default, it's only Visa and MasterCard, but you can accept Amex and Diners and whatever those two are <laughs> under the, uh, the eWay payment service as well. So all of that information here needs to be recorded uh, within your eWay account, which has to be set up prior to doing this step. So the first step is to, uh, for obviously new clients, is to get a zero file, prove to eWay that you have a zero file, get the discounts and uh, the special offer for being an existing zero customer, set up with eWay and then come back into zero and set up in this screen. So really I can't show you how that works um, and go and there is plenty of videos on the eWay website or if you go to the zero add-ons and then go through eWay that way it will take you straight to the zero eWay promotional material and all of the details about the, uh, the partner program, the office for the zero partners and how to set it up. Uh, so you can do that, so review the eWay and zero integration. Uh, if you can and you have time, complete the free eWay training for partners so that you're fully aware of how to use it for your clients when they're ready to go. And uh, hopefully you can set up an existing Zero client on it and keep going forward. So that's the four major updates on Zero throughout, uh, throughout September. Now Unleashed. So some of you may or may not have used Unleashed too much before and this is not an, an Unleashed training session and even when it comes to auto management this module was so big that I'm just going to show you the key uh, benefits of auto management, show you how to use them and obviously how to sell them and then uh, they, you know, in future I'm sure there will be some further auto management training to really understand the, the depth of what actually can be done uh, overall with auto management. So, I will just show you yeah, the bits and pieces, but uh, and I'm showing you all of the key features, it, but as I said, it can't actually be a full auto management training session. That would probably take me two hours on its, on its own to get into the detail of, of that. So auto management that Unleashed released is all about being able to uh, manage your orders uh, more efficiently uh, and understand what customer orders have been taken and how you can fulfill them and then fulfill them as quickly as possible uh, to get them out to the customer and keep the customer happy. The, uh, there is also now a pick and pack functionality that enables you to basically track a, a shipment throughout the warehouse. So Unleashed uh, Order Management, the key report which I'm going to show you is the back order inquiry. What it enables you to do is see the status of all your customer orders and the business's ability to fulfill them. It gives you complete transparency into order fulfillment. Just bring my Unleashed across so you can see that. All right, so in Unleashed, the report I mentioned is the backorder inquiry. We go to sales and then backorder inquiry.
What the back order inquiry shows you is the ability for the business to ship uh, the orders. Oh, I'm just going to refresh that because my colors aren't coming up. Excellent. Well, my colors aren't showing here. <laughs> Let me just try that one more time and then because it was working fine a minute ago. The beauty of live demos. All right, maybe it'll start working for me again in a minute. What happens here <laughs> when this is working correctly is the uh, the colors on the, 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 the percentage bar shows up here with the colors of, uh, of either blue or green based on whether you can ship this ship an order or not. You can also click this left hand, left hand button to see, oh there's my colors, there we go, to see the, uh, the ability to fulfill that order. So I'll just minimize that again. All right, now we can see it. So 100%. I can ship this top order 100% of that order and I can only ship 74% of this order. So let's drop, drill down on this order and see why we can't do that. So we can see that we've ever ordered 200 animal shapes and 50 biscuit tins. We still need to ship all of those items and we can ship 50%, sorry, we can ship 50 of the biscuit tins, which is 100% of the biscuit tins but we only have 95 animal shapes available so therefore we can only ship uh, 95 and that's why we don't have 100% shipment uh, available for that particular item. So that's the back order inquiry and it gives you the complete transparency into the order fulfillment. Now managing shipments, we can record the shipping company and the tracking number on a shipment. For those of you that want to obviously know more about <laughs> the back order inquiry and how to process, just hold tight for a second because this, this is all flows together to show you the whole process. So the recording the shipping company and the tracking number on a shipment is now possible and you can, uh, obviously the benefit to the customer is that you can have the shipment details with the order. You can also manage your shipments of your orders and do part shipments and take a, an order, uh, a shipment through a pick and pack status. So you can track the shipment through the warehouse. Let me show you how to do that. Okay, so for this order that is 100%, I'm just going to ship off that order and show you how we can take it from pick, uh, take it uh, into the, uh, the warehouse and move it through from picking to packing. And then we're going to record the shipping details on it and uh, dispatch it and it will be completed and sent to, the, uh, sent to the customer. So first of all, before we do that, I'm gonna open up in a second screen the shipment inquiry. Now the reason why I'm doing that is because this back order inquiry will record all of your customer uh, orders, whether they're placed, back ordered, uh, quotes, whatever it is. This screen is like your sales reps or your, your admin screen that says these are all the customer's orders and this is where I'm going to manage them. Now sometimes you're going to have a business where they will manage the customer orders and then they will manage, uh, have a, just warehouse people that are just there just to pack up the goods and get them out. They don't actually want the warehouse people to know all of the details around all of the other sales invoices. They just want them to know that when they have to ship something, they do it and they get it to customer as quickly as possible. So this back order inquiry is your sales order management screen basically. The shipment inquiry, which I've got open in another screen, is your warehouse management screen. So this should be for your warehouse uh, persons being able to come in here, see what they need to ship and, uh, and make it happen. So back in the, the back order inquiry, there's lots of different ways to create a shipment. I'm just going to show you one today. So we're going to go to the end here, the action cog and hit ship for this particular order. Once we do that, the shipment screen opens and then we don't want to record any of these other details yet. All we want to do is place the shipment because we don't know anything else. We don't know how many are out there, etc. Let's just hit place and that is going to tell the warehouse person when they look at the shipment inquiry, that's going to tell them to go and please pick these details, pick these goods and send them off to this particular client. So the warehouse manager can come in here and open shipment number three. 
just show you one thing on this back order inquiry. On the back order inquiry, now we've created a shipment. You can see that this is now no longer in the can ship, it's in the on shipments. So let's go in, let's be the warehouse manager now, open the shipment, and then see what needs to get packed. So here we've got uh, five animal shapes ordered and five biscuit tins ordered. We need to ship each of those, and so we're going to, we've got five there. So uh, that's what we've picked, and that's what we're going to ship. Now I'll come up the top to our little save button and you can see when you drop down the menu to the little button on the right hand side that you can save this order as placed, it, or it already is placed but you can then save it as picking, picked or packed. In a lot of warehouses there will be the warehouse manager will have the details of what it is that he needs to pick with all of these different orders. Uh, you can print a, a picking slip at any time down the bottom here, print a picking slip, he'll go and pick all of his items and then uh, bring it back to a table, pick it and then uh, yeah, pick them all, pack them all. Uh, so you obviously want to know what's being placed and what's being picking and what's picked and you know, different statuses. Um, you may not want to move everything through and update it every single time, but it depends on um, how important and how many orders really are, are going and how many different people are doing it. So that's, that's your options to save your statuses for the shipment. So let's say that this is all now um, packed and ready to go. I didn't load a preload a shipping company. When you've got your, your shipping companies loaded in here, you would select, say, fast couriers, and then enter the tracking number, and you can hit dispatch. So you can print a ship note, you can print a pick note, a pick list uh, from inside that screen as well. So now that that shipment has been dispatched, it's no longer showing as a shipment on the shipment inquiry. It will also no longer be showing on the back order inquiry because it's completed. So I can, actually no, you need to go into the view sales invoice screen to see the completed orders. But now on the back order inquiry, we can see what other orders need to be fulfilled. So there I've shown you how you can create a shipment, how you can, uh, record the picked status and the packing status of that particular shipment and track the shipment through the warehouse and then record the tracking number and the shipping company on that particular invoice. Now let's look at part shipments quickly. Ah, the other thing that happened at the end of that process uh, that I just did when the order was dispatched uh, it would have also completed the invoice and sent a copy of that invoice into Xero. It would send a copy of the sales invoice into the money coming in section of Xero and it would send a uh, cost of goods sold journal to the uh, to Unleash, to, to Xero as well, so that you have that real-time uh, cost of goods sold and real-time gross profit margin in Xero. So if, you, if that's all completely new to you, that's a whole nother session on, on, uh, on Unleashed and Zero and how they connect together. All right, so the part shipment. Let's look at this other order. Now, I'm gonna go into the sales invoice this time. And I know from what we looked at before that we can ship all of the biscuit tins, but we don't have enough of the animal shapes. So to create a part shipment here, uh, this is another way to do a shipment, is that I'm going to tick the biscuit tins and I'm going to hit this action cog and go to ship. And in this case I have my biscuit tins because I ticked just that line, it shows that the biscuit tins that there's 50 orders, that I uh, have 90 on hand and that I can ship 50%. Oh, sorry, not 50%, 50 of those items which is 100% of that particular item. So let's not bother going through everything else and just hit dispatch. And that is a part shipment. If I look here into on this invoice, I can now see that it says quantity 50 were ordered and there's been 50 shipped. And I can open that if I want to go into the shipment details. Or this little box here says shipments. I can also select that and find the details of the shipment in here as well. That's where the tracking number and shipping company, etc is uh, recorded too, so that if you're talking to the customer and Ben Supplies rings you and says, hey, where's my order up to? You can straight away come in here uh, into the, say, what order is it? And then you can find those details. Now, there's something else that's happened to this order at this point in time, and that is the fact, oh, sorry, that is the fact that it is back ordered. So uh, you can mark an invoice as back ordered by coming up here, you can do it automatically or manually yourself by 
uh, hitting save in back order. But as you know, I didn't do that. It's recorded that for me because it knows I've done a part shipment and there's another part of the shipment which can't go. So that therefore is uh, the, the order is, is back ordered. All right, so my purpose there was to show you how to do a part shipment. Now, when you uh, can't fulfill an order and you can't fulfill an order because you don't have the orders, the, the items available, the next logical step is to be able to create a purchase order directly from a customer order. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now, what the, uh, it does enable the, the purpose of being able to create a purchase order directly from a customer order and the benefit for your customers is that it can enable drop shipping quite easily and also just in time. Now, if you're not uh, an inventory expert and you haven't lived inventory for the past 12 months like I have, that may not make complete sense. So what drop, drop shipping is, is where a customer places an order and then the business that, uh, that they've ordered from sends a notification to directly to the supplier or the manufacturer and says, uh, please manufacturer, send this item to my customer directly. Don't send it to me so I can send it on to the customer, send it directly to the customer. So the purchase order that is placed needs to make place with the supplier needs to have the customer's address on it, not the business's address on it. So that's what dropshipping is. And just in time is when you have a supplier that can supply the goods reasonably quickly uh, and you want to be able to get those uh, uh, particular items uh, quickly sent to you just in time as soon as the customer order has been placed. So sometimes you want to be able, it'll be a rare item and you just want to be able to place a purchase order for straight off that particular invoice as soon as you know about it. Other times you're going to have a number of orders placed throughout the day and you're going to want to make a bulk reorder of those items. In that case, you wouldn't be using this function where you create a purchase order directly from a customer order. You will be uh, creating the purchase order from the reorder report. So let me show you how to create a purchase order. And what we're going to do is obviously purchase the animal shapes that we can no longer, uh, that we can't fulfill. Now one more step to show you what's happening in the background as this is all happening before we go and create that purchase order. Oh, I will let my back order inquiry refresh its colors in a minute. <laughs> I'll show you this other thing first. So we go to, uh, we know we need to order 100, and, uh, I think it's 105 of the animal shapes box set. So there's, you can create a purchase for the item down the bottom using that similar function here. But just so I can show you how else you can create a shipment or create a purchase order will come to the top here. So drop down the little box next to order management and hit create purchase. So here we have biscuit tins for an order quantity of 50, but we know we have on hand 95, so we don't need to purchase them. So we can just delete that off. And this other one here, Animal Shapes box set uh, 200 uh, is what's been ordered. We have 95 on hand, we need to purchase 105. If I had entered a default uh, supplier here, I could, uh, it would be showing up here automatically, but I don't actually have one in this file, uh, but I can enter it through here uh, as well. So that's where we, uh, enter in the supplier that we need to buy from but obviously to make this step quicker if you put your suppliers against your products themselves so it can it can uh, do that if you were ordering five different products from five different suppliers you can have five different suppliers recorded uh, recorded in this list hit create and it will create five different purchase orders for you uh, straight away so let's hit create and see how it does it just for one all right one create purchase order has been created successfully. And here we've got created purchase, purchase order one. So let's click on that and it will take me to purchase order one. The difference between this purchase order and a normal purchase order is that it has a linked sales order number on it. If you were to enter in the purchase order directly, you wouldn't have had this, uh, this detail here. So you can, that's how you can get this purchase orders linked back to the sales invoices. If you're doing a bulk reorder or if you're doing a purchase order directly, that screen doesn't exist. It's only if you create it from the sales invoice. If you're doing drop shipping, you can then also enter in the customer's details here. Unfortunately, at this point, Unleash doesn't take the customer's details off the sales invoice and put it in here for you. In future, they will. 
Down the bottom, you can see the 105 animal shapes that they needed to order to be able to complete that, uh, that sale. And the price is pulled through from the default purchase price for the product as well. So let's hit place. Once you've placed it, you would then come down the bottom and email that purchase order directly to the supplier so that they can get the goods to you or the customer as soon as possible. Let's just look at our back order inquiry here. And we actually haven't, we've purchased those goods, but we haven't uh, received them into the warehouse yet. So this hasn't changed, it's just a back ordered invoice with some of the shipments gone, some of the stuff is still on the shipments and that we can ship 23%. Basically, we can't do anything until we get those animal shapes in. So let's go and receipt that purchase order in and see how that changes. So here it is, purchase order one. I'm going to go straight to my receipt screen. I don't want to do costings or anything like that today and say that I've received 105 into my warehouse from Aurora Trading. Once I receive those goods in, it's always, when you're using a lot of screens in Unleashed, it's always, and zero is obviously the same, it's always best to close down the screens that you aren't using if you want to be able to refresh the, the report. So I'm going to go now to my back order inquiry and I can see they, these percentages get a little bit confusing <laughs> because it doesn't actually, because it gets confused between what we ship, especially when you're doing a part shipment in this way. But I can see that obviously we've got on shipments is 50% and then I can ship the other 49. So if we now go to ship, I can see that I can ship 195 of that order and I can enter in the details and either place it and send it through the warehouse or just hit dispatch. Once I've completed the whole shipment, I can then uh, go through the process of, uh, the, sorry, when I've completed the whole shipment, the invoice is sent to zero. The it, Unleashed does not yet send the in, any invoice to zero until all of the shipments of an order has gone, so the whole order's gone. That's something that they will be bringing in uh, in their next update, is to, be, is to be able to split the invoice. Okay. Back to our slides. So I've shown you how you can uh, create a part shipment, take a shipment throughout the warehouse and track it through the warehouse, picking and packing it. How you can create a purchase order directly from a customer order and link it back to that. And you can do multiple purchase orders for one order. Uh, and be able to, uh, and be able to um, mark the invoices back ordered and know when it can be fulfilled. Uh, I just had a notice pop up there to say the last thing about uh, invoices and I'm assuming that's to do with, yes, the Unleashed to Zero invoice. So right now in Unleashed, whether you've got order management enabled or not, you can uh, send a, uh, as soon as the shipment is completed in full, or sorry, as soon as the whole order that's been placed has been completed in full, it will send a copy of the invoice to Zero. Let's say you get the order uh, in and you can only do a part shipment. If you do a part shipment, then you only, uh, the shipment is recorded in Unleashed, but the invoice is not sent from Unleashed to zero until the point in time that the second or all shipments of that particular order has gone. So in future, Unleashed will enable it that they will split the, uh, the shipment and then take the value of the first shipment and send it to zero so that you can obviously send an issue to the customer. If the second stock is another month away, you the current workaround and is to uh, clone the original invoice and then take off the items that you have shipped and that second invoice becomes, uh, sorry, you've got, so then you'll have two invoices, one that has the items that were shipped in the first shipment and another invoice that has the items that uh, have not yet been shipped. So what will happen is because the first invoice has been completely shipped, it will go through to zero and then uh, the second ship items are waiting to be shipped or will sit as back ordered until you can send them. So not an ideal feature, something they should have brought out the first release, but they obviously weren't able to. Uh, so yeah, it does make part, parts of what I've just shown you uh, impractical and, and, not, and may not be worth it for some of your clients to not enable auto, auto management until 
until they have that function, but it is definitely, it is definitely coming. Okay, so it's a lot to take in, the order management, especially if you haven't seen Unleash before. So feel free to jot down any questions that you have around that one, or we can cover off any particular sections in further detail in the Q&A. The training tasks for order management, and it, it's even for me as well, who's been training on order management since it was released in late July, is it just takes practice. Being able, there's so many different ways to be able to use that particular system in a different process and different ways for different clients. Uh, it's just, just takes practice. Understanding what the features do and what's possible is number one. And secondly, it's just practice in actually learning it yourself. You'll be able to train better on it once you understand how it works. Okay, so if we can now take our Unleashed hat off and put our Vend hat on. So, Vend's latest release was to do with the loyalty program. We, the loyalty program allows customers to earn loyalty points when purchasing products. The more you buy, the more points you get. So the benefit for you to be able to sell this feature to your customers is that, uh, that, that they can now reward their customers uh, through the, the loyalty dollars. So let me show you how to use it and also how to set it up. Okay, so first thing you need to do is set up your loyalty program. So if you go to setup, invent, and then go to loyalty, you've got two boxes here. One is to tick the enable loyalty and the other one is to send the welcome email. So your setup process is uh, saying I want to enable loyalty and I want to uh, in this case set it up $50 gives you $1 loyalty so spending $50 earns $1 loyalty so that's what will be tracked by the system each time that customer buys from you through Vent. Then when you're setting up your customers you can send them a welcome email. You don't actually have to uh, do anything other than uh, enable the customer for the loyalty, which I'll show you how to do in a second. So that's your welcome email that I suggest setting up when you enable the loyalty so that it looks nice and they get the little email as soon as you enable it. Okay, so that's how you set it up in the first place. Now let's go to the sell screen. And this is obviously the main screen that you're using in uh, Vend, and you don't have to go into customers to add a customer, you can just go here. So let's just select a little plus button. Just imagine it's a new customer that's come in, you've sold them something, and you go, Hey, um, Joe, would you like to uh, be part of our loyalty program? And she goes, Yes, please. So then you send enter all the details in here and you enable loyalty for the customer. If they want to give you the details but not bother about the loyalty program, then you just untick that box. So that's how easy it is to enable loyalty for a new customer. If you have a whole lot of existing customers in your Venn file, you can export out your customers, update the enable loyalty little box inside the Excel spreadsheet, uh, save it as a CSV and import it back in. That's how you can enable it for your existing customers. You can also give them an existing loyalty balance. Maybe you want to, for every customer, you sort of schedule your customers or you know assign them all a certain starting point if they've been customers with you for a while. I don't know. You could do that if you wanted to, but you can do all that in the spreadsheet for your existing customers. Now, that's your two ways to enable loyalty for your new customer and your existing customers. Now that we have done that, let's go to sell something. So let's say that we're going to sell this person a coffee and hit pay. And you can see here we have a loyalty button. Before I enabled loyalty, that wasn't there. I have a loyalty button here. Now, number one, I haven't selected an actual customer. And number two, uh, the customer, if I did select a customer, they may or may not have loyalty points. So if the loyalty points are not available, then that loyalty button is not going to show up. But if that customer is enabled for loyalty, you've selected the customer, it's enabled for loyalty, and they have points available, then this loyalty button will go grey and you can select it. So I've shown you how to enable the loyalty program, set it up for a new and an existing customer, and also how to pay with loyalty points.
So your training tasks when it comes to the Venn loyalty program is run through how to enable and set up the loyalty program in your Venn file and process a payment with the loyalty points. And that will give you the confidence to obviously then go and answer any questions to your customers about Vent. Venn's other big uh, update they had in September was the payments with Tyro. Now, Tyro, I, I can't show you this because uh, in relation to the actual FPOS machine, because I don't have a Tyro FPOS machine, but uh, Tyro is an independent FPOS provider. So it enables store owners to take payment fast and securely through FPOS, but it, they can save on the merchant fees. So the merchant fees from the banks for the terminals and for all the monthly fees, etc., can be quite high. If you look through the Tyro website, you can see that it uh, the fees are a lot less. Uh, you can save on fees and they can also process their payments in Vent. So let me show you how to set that up inside Vent. It obviously requires an account with Tyro and also a, a, a Tyro approved, approved terminal. All right, so to set up the Tyro payments, obviously a payment type, we go to setup and then payments and taxes. Just gonna delete my original one out so that we can add it again. All right, so we've gone set up and payments and taxes and then we go new payment type. You select the Tyro payment type from the list and you may only have one FPOS machine so you could just write FPOS. Uh, this is the button that shows up in the pay screen when you select the pay screen. So in this case, I'll leave it as ty, Tyro dash FPOS. Maybe you'll just want to put it FPOS because Tyro might not mean anything to the to the retail the, the retail system. So save the payment type. Once you save it, you then get a link that says, "Give me all your Tyro account details." So you need a Tyro account with Vent. So when you want to configure your Tyro account with Vent, you click that button. And then it says, what's your terminal? What's your merchant ID? Uh, what's your terminal ID? All that stuff that, that Tyro gives you so that you can set it up. Once we've then got that payment type saved, even if it's not fully set up, you can go to the sell screen and sell something and take a payment with Tyro. So let's go to t-shirt and hit pay. And I now have this Tyro-FPOS button here. So if I was to select that, it then knows to trigger the Tyro machine. It's not gonna show up because it's not connected, I don't think. But it will, uh, the, once, you, it, once you click that button, it then shows up with the, uh, the Tyro, it triggers the Tyro machine to obviously take the payment from the customer. And then once that's done, uh, it accepts it and then closes this screen because it knows the payment's been taken because Vend and the Tyro machine are talking to each other. Okay, so your training tasks with Vend uh, and the payments with Tyro is to add a Tyro payment type, just as I have just shown you. And if you can and you have a Tyro machine, test a sale taking payment with Tyro. There is obviously, as with any integration, required there is a video and also a whole lot of information on Vend and Tyro within their particular websites as well. Wow okay so I hope that you've um, obviously I've seen questions popping up throughout the session so I'm going to have a look at that and let's have a look at the questions hopefully you kept up with me there and I know it's a lot to take in especially when you've got three systems. All right so, oh, there's actually not too many questions that I have here. Hopefully that means I explained it well. Uh, we've got, yeah, no, I've answered those questions. I answered the ones about Unleashed uh, on, the, on, on the fly. So, happy to take any further questions for, from you, if you have any other questions there. So please, uh, yeah, you can enter them in the chat box or let me know if you want to open up the, open up the line as well.